right, everyone. I've got something baffling that we need to talk about. And I'm hoping that you can help. So I've been saying for a long time that people should buy what they like. I will stick to that forever. That is the number one rule of collecting is buy what you like. So if you like modern cards, buy modern cards. If you like old cards, buy old cards. If you like soccer cards, buy soccer cards. Because at the end of the day, this is about having fun, enjoying ourselves. But something's been happening that is kind of hard for me to wrap my head around. The prices of things of modern cards is out of control. Now, and that's even with the fact that they've been slumping, right? They've been going down in value. And they're still out of control, like completely out of control. I don't think I fully understand why cards are selling for what they're selling for when we're talking about modern stuff. I, I don't want to put any shade on anybody. I don't want to say anything negative about what people are buying. But someone needs to help me understand. And the whole, the whole time that this came out, I was just flipping through, I don't remember, I, I think it was YouTube, and a video po popped up with, you know, Jeff from the Sports Card Investor, and he was super excited because he had just landed this Steph Curry RPA card that was valued at over $100,000, and he had laid out on the case all the stuff he traded to get it. And like one of the cards in the trade he gave up was a Mickey Mantle 51 Bowman rookie card. And he gave up a 33 Gaudi Ruth. And all, probably seven or eight more cards. And I'm like, wait, 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 let's back up. You just traded a Mantle rookie, a 33 Gaudi Ruth, and a whole bunch of other stuff. For this Steph Curry card. Now I love Steph Curry. I live in Northern California. I really like Steph Curry. Uh, Steph Curry is hard to not like. But what are we doing? How does this make any sense? So I started looking into it. Started looking at prices of other players. And it is crazy. Let's take a look at a few different modern cards compare them to a few different vintage cards and look at the comparison of what they're selling for and i really need you all to leave a comment and help me to understand this whole thing because i'm lost but look at these comparisons look at these breakdowns right here and then please leave a comment and help enlighten me so, I mean, we all buy stuff that we like, but we also want to buy stuff that's going to go up in value. Nobody wants to buy something that then immediately plummets in value because otherwise we'd wait to buy it until after it plummeted, right? So let's look here at this Drew Jones card, right? This, this Drew Jones card recently sold, and it's not even graded versus... This Lou Gehrig Gowdy card. All right? So what would you rather have? The Drew Jones or the Lou Gehrig Gowdy? Well, look at the price of the Drew Jones, the ungraded Drew Jones, which has some edging issues, by the way, versus the Lou Gehrig. You could buy the Lou Gehrig and have a lot of money left over. Or you could have the ungraded Drew Jones with edging. There's no chance that card gems. Its best hope is a nine. How about Jackson Holiday? First pick in the draft last year. And it isn't a 10. And it is numbered, but it's not like it's out of one. Or Ty Cobb. Right, we have a Ty Cobb. T206 in a four and a half, which is a pretty decent grade for a T206. This is a pretty nice Ty Cobb. So we have the Jackson Holiday. 
and we have the tight cup, the Jackson Holiday is a lot more expensive than Thai Cobb. I mean, Jackson Holiday is like 18 or 19 years old. He's never had a major league at bat. Yet his card is selling for over $1,000 more than a Ty Cobb T206 portrait card? All right. How about Jordan Walker? Now, a lot of people think he is the top prospect in all of baseball. Or would you rather have a Babe Ruth Gowdy and a Cy Young T206 and a three? And that Babe Ruth is not a bad-looking card. It's a pretty decent one. There are people that are buying Jordan Walker rookie cards for almost $25,000. When instead, they could buy a Gowdy Babe Ruth and a T206 Cy Young and have money left over. Why would anyone do that? Does anybody think in 10 years that a Jordan Walker will be worth more than a Gowdy Babe Ruth and a T206 Cy Young? Let's look at Trevor Lawrence. Now, Trevor Lawrence has like a thousand different rookie cards. He's got like hundreds of different one-of-one cards. This isn't even a one-of-one or a, a really nice Jim Brown seven and a half, and a really nice Johnny Unitas rookie, perfectly centered. Look at the price differences. If you look at that Trevor Lawrence, it's more than a really nice Jim Brown and a really nice Johnny Unitas rookie. And there are tons of Trevor Lawrence autograph cards, tons of RPA Trevor Lawrence cards, tons of 101s, which that one isn't even a 101. How about a Joe Burrow cracked ice auto? Again, there are so many Joe Burrow autograph cards out there, so many Joe Burrow numbered cards out there, or autograms rookie card and Bart Starr's rookie card. Now check this one out. Check this out. If you look at the Joe Burrow Cracked Ice Auto and compare it to an autogram rookie and a Bart Starr rookie, you would be able to buy the autogram and the Bart Starr and have $19,000. Would you rather have $19,000 and a really nice autogram rookie and a really nice Bart Starr rookie or a Joe Burrow autograph rookie when there are thousands and thousands and thousands of different Joe Burrow autograph rookies? How about one of the premier young wide receivers, Justin Jefferson, or a... PSA 9 Joe Montana rookie and a PSA 9 Jerry Rice rookie. I mean, if everything goes perfectly for Jefferson, he still won't be as good as Jerry Rice. And Jerry Rice's rookie card is a tough card. And that Jefferson is also ungraded. So you don't even know what it's going to get. You don't even know how nice it is. It's just There's just a picture of it. Or a really nice Montana, a really nice rice, and quite a bit of money left over. So somebody bought that Justin Jefferson instead of buying one of the best quarterbacks of all time, if not the best, and the best wide receiver of all time. I mean, those those are arguably two of two of the top best players of all time. How about basketball? We got Joel Embiid. He's a really good player. Is he as good as Bill Russell and Wilt Chamberlain? That's a Wilt Chamberlain rookie and a Bill Russell rookie. Or a Joel Embiid RPA. 
Look at the price of the Joel Embiid compared to the Bill Russell and the Wilt Chamberlain. It's less expensive to buy that Bill Russell and Wilt Chamberlain than Joel Embiid. I mean, do we think that someday Joel Embiid will be as good as one of those guys? And if he is, is is that card, should that card be worth more? I mean, again, let's just fast forward 20 years. What do you think is going to be worth more? The Chamberlain and the Russell or the Embiid? All right, how about this one? Jason Tatum, very good player, first team All-NBA, or a SGC7 Jabbar rookie and an SGC7 Oscar Robertson rookie and a PSA 9 Michael Jordan rookie. Like, you think I'm kidding, right? You're like, no way. No, seriously. The Jason Tatum... RPA in a 9.5 sold for more than the Al Cinder rookie plus the Oscar Robertson rookie plus the Michael Jordan in a PSA 9. How is that possible? But it's happening every single day. Again, if you're speculating, if you're interested in you know cards that are going to go up, if you're a huge Jason Tatum fan, there are a lot of Jason Tatum cards out there. But how does this make any sense? Are we getting carried away with the modern stuff? Because if this isn't getting carried away, I'm completely baffled. Help me to understand this. Seriously, somebody leave a comment and explain to me. Which of these cards is going to be worth more in 20 years? Because I don't think it's going to be that Jason Tatum over those other three cards. I don't think it's going to be the Jackson Holiday. I don't think it's going to be the Joel Embiid. Explain to me how this makes sense because I don't get it. If you have not yet subscribed to my channel, I hope you'll take a second and hit that subscribe button.